an ideal husband and wife pledged to establish an eternal family with which God can be happy. Do you pledge to inherit heavenly tradition and as the external parents of goodness raise up your children to be the examples of this standard before the family and the world? I proclaim that these 2,075 couples are wedded before God, the true parents, the world, and the universe on July 1st, 1982. What a beautiful couple. He's so handsome and she's so beautiful. Their lives should be beautiful. Izzy got married. Izzy got married. We were in Korea seven years ago, and at that time we didn't have any of our family or friends with us. So we had many other people. We were also married um, with 1,800 couples. Even though we were married with 1,800 couples, it just feels as special to you as it must to everyone else there. It's just a very, very special, wonderful feeling. The feeling is what I would expect the people of Israel might have felt if Moses could have officiated at their wedding 4,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago what it would feel to, to uh, a Christian to have Jesus himself officiating or what it would mean to a, Buddha, a Buddhist to have Buddha himself involved as God's representative in the ceremony. From our point of view, Reverend Moon is such a person. The marriage of Reverend and Mrs. Moon in 1960 was the first wedding, actually the first blessing in uh, all our Unification Church history. And we believe that this marriage is actually the foundation for God's blessing of all mankind. Each wedding that followed got larger and larger and symbolizes an ever-widening circle of God's blessing flowing out to the world. 36 couples, 72, 124, 430, and then in 1970, over 777 couples were married. We were blessed that day, 12 years ago, in Seoul, Korea. This is us on our wedding day. It was so overwhelming, and uh, just the whole experience was just something sacred. As important for us, as Reverend Moon has said, as the salvation of a whole nation. The last major blessing was in Seoul, Korea, of 1,800 couples in 1975. the wedding, we had a rehearsal at Madison Square Garden. Don't cut corners short on the left. Go around Mrs. Repkins. You're cutting your corner short. Go up to the edge and make a square corner, please. <laughs> I'm sure that most people were thinking about, of course, the next day. Many of the members, you know, had been members of the Unification Church for several years. And we talk a lot about marriage, we talk a lot about family life, but of course nobody up to that point has experienced it really. It's all pretty much theory. So I'm sure that most people were thinking and feeling this is really the fulfillment or the, the turning point in their lives when they are really stepping into a whole new reality. There should be two 
This American blessing, which is called, the wedding ceremony is called a blessing, is, is significant so far as I'm concerned because it's such an international collection of couples. So it's kind of laying the foundation for the ideal world, you know, couples that, that transcend the racial barriers between people. Music! Wait, 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 wait. marriage we're also trying to establish a new tradition of a high moral standard and of eternal family you know even when river moon matches people or engages people he's thinking of um, you know thinking of the children he's not just thinking about how these people will complement each other which he does he's very very concerned about people when he engages them i can you know i've been through seen two engagement ceremonies and um, I can really feel his sincere desire to try to match people that will complement each other. Patsy Johnson, Marshall, Texas. And how old are you? I'm 29 years old. And uh, Bruce? Bruce J. Casino, uh, born Toronto, Canada, and I'm also 29. Uh, how long have you been engaged? Three years. Can you describe a little bit about how that came about? Mm -hmm. In terms of engagement? Well, there, there were um, about 1,500 of us who came together uh, to seek Reverend Moon's advice in terms of uh, choosing a, a marriage partner. And um, uh, Patsy and I were introduced to each other by Reverend Moon uh, at that time. And since then, it's been three glorious years of getting to know each other and... Uh, uh, really having a wonderful time. Yeah. Uh, Reverend Moon basically made the choice in this instance. He did. He did the matchmaking, mm -hmm. so to speak. Made the suggestion, and then we talked it over. And I'd like to ask the parents to comment on how they feel about this marriage and the manner in which um, your son <laughs> became engaged. <laughs> well, it's a little bit unusual to us, of course, but um, having met Susan, we don't think he'd have... Uh, Money is any better if he left entirely on his, to his own resources. I think that uh, what Mr. Moon has arranged will work out very well for everybody. We're very happy about it. Yes, and I think I agree with that. It's really extraordinary how well, uh, temperamentally well suited they seem to be, as well as um, you know, I, their ideals are the same and their um, intention in life is the same. Their, their values are pretty good, and I feel that. Uh, you do have some apprehension, you know, when they're matched. You think it's, it's go, that sort of, love doesn't seem to enter into it. But then when you think about it, you realize that the, the basis of their marriage is, is based on love, but in a different way, not necessarily the, the great big falling in love that we have. But love is a deeper thing and develops for them. Yes, I think they're very well matched. And I found that we were at ease with Susan immediately. Um, I hope she was with us. And uh, we seem to... Um, well, I, I felt that we were all on the same wavelength straight away. I think the matching is quite remarkable. What happened uh, some three years ago, we were, we were in a, a large room, about 1,500 of us, and we were all assembled there to ask his advice in terms of a mate. And Reverend Moon was counseling us and giving us spiritual advice. And he began to talk to, to different persons in the, uh, amongst the congregation. I remember looking at him, I, at that point I was very close to him, and I, I remember looking in his eyes and just sensing, a, uh, I think, the deepest love that I had ever experienced, uh, this tremendous sense of God really uh, being in him and with him at that particular moment. He puts a tremendous amount of energy and, and concentration and uh, prayer into both the preparation for this experience and then the actual the actual doing of this uh, can go on for 24 hours straight and, and you just you see the sweat pouring off him and he's just completely absorbed in in what he's doing uh, and he said afterwards that he he just feels that he's being used as a channel to accomplish god's will and I really believe that. I really trust his spirituality and his 
relationship to God and the fact that he's had a lot of experience in this in this area and so I feel that he can that uh, especially that relationship with God would lead to him suggesting someone that would be really uh, right for me spiritually and allow me to bring out my potential often I think people marry because they're, they want to play some game with someone else or they're, they're it's, it's not really a, uh, they complement each other's weaknesses or they allow the other person to get away with certain things in their personality they allow them not to have to confront certain problems they may have but um, I think God would want us to grow and, and become better persons and not just accept each other completely where we are but but really see the potential and try to bring that out in another person. And that potential really exists in our marriages, I think. Before the church, I used to think about marriage, and in my heart I felt a lot of pain because I saw so many divorces. I don't know, I began to wonder could marriage really work. Also, I felt, I felt like love is the strongest force in the whole universe. You know, people die for love. But love is so often misused and abused, and so just through a lot of soul searching, I started realizing that without God, I don't think you can have true love. I really believe that. Without God, there is no true love. And being so very idealistic, I realized that if I married, I'd have to marry someone who loved God. I came to that conclusion after a lot of searching and a lot of deep prayer. Just something I felt deep down inside my soul. And I think, because I know in every marriage, there's going to be difficulties, you know. Nothing is just perfect automatically. And I expect ups and downs in our own marriage, but I really feel because we can, you know, we can come to God together and pray about it, then I think every problem can be solved. So I have a lot of hope in this marriage. A lot of hope. How does it look? <laughs> Anything happen up there it should be identical, both sides, yeah. identical. Right after the matching, we decided to go for a walk around New York City. And I just felt completely comfortable not having to put on an image, just completely accepted for who I was. And Susan won my heart because she carried my coat, and it was really a hot day, and I thought, this sister is so wonderful. Here she's carrying this hot old coat, and it's 100 degrees out, and she just won my heart. And uh, we walked and, and talked, and then we went out for supper that night. And it was just like uh, I didn't feel awkward around the table, and it was somebody I could be with. I just immediately liked him. I liked the way he was. We were just, just talking and just getting to know each other and really enjoying each other's company and, and just the the majesty of, of the whole experience that we had gone through the day before. At first, I was really anxious. I was, I was going, let's get this over with, because I was so nervous, you know. Just going into that room and feeling so grateful to be a part of this amazing event, it was just such an exhilarating feeling. Huh? Am I? So are you. <laughs> I thought about my family a lot, my parents and, and even my ancestors and you just start to see yourself not in terms of your own lifetime but as a part of, of the eternal history that our lives are so connected to all that came before and all that's going to come after. I felt this is your time. <laughs> It was so exciting, you know, it was just, it was like your moment, it was so precious. Then the next thing, I just, I heard Reverend Moon call out, um, you with the red tie. <laughs> he says, you with the red tie, come forward. And uh, so I did, and I was trying to find the armhole in my coat and not fall on my face because there were so many people. So he looked at me and he says, I want you to raise your right hand and swear to me that you'll be a good husband for this sister. As soon as I said that, Father smiled, and then he stepped aside, and I saw Susan for the first time. I'd never seen her. And it was like, bam! It was like a really strong attraction from the first second I saw her. And 
So Susan looked up, and then she looked down really quick, very bashful. And then we went upstairs to discuss Father's recommendation. And so, you know, I, I really trusted Father. After watching all the matching that he had done and how concerned he was for each couple and the time he took, I was really confident, also based on the spiritual beliefs that we have. And I just felt 100%, so all I wanted to know was, who is she? <laughs> And she said, well, her name was Susan Bergman, and she's been in the family 10 years. And I thought, oh, boy, I got a saint. I just felt so totally comfortable. And there was nothing strange about this way of meeting. <laughs> this seems perfectly natural, the most natural thing in my life. But I felt we just shared a very deep, spiritual, common ground. Reverend Moon has said, you are not happy just because there is someone beside you, but because you can see him, talk to him, and be with him. So happiness requires a relationship. This is true of man and also true of God. Love cannot exist by itself, but only through the give and take between subject and object. God couldn't create love by himself. We say that God created man as his object, but not just an object to look at. We were created to be objects of his love. Nothing less, nothing more, nothing other than love. You can be so confident as to say that without you, God can't be happy. The relationship to God is of absolute love. He can be just anything to you. In perfection, you don't need prayer. You live heart to heart with God. You no longer need a religion, nor do you need a savior. All these things of religion are part of the mending process, the process of restoration. A person of perfect health doesn't need a physician. Practically every girl looks nice in this uh, basic princess line pattern. And also, it's, it was simple to make, and anyone can make it. I mean, you can sew a little bit. The thing that's so nice about these dresses is each girl did something a little bit different on the dress. For instance, some people added a little bit more lace or less lace. Some, for instance, added more buttons. I added eight buttons, and some used four buttons. So this way you have a little bit of uh, variety. Because of the time, too, you know, in short notice, then we wanted something that was beautiful but simple. I'm not sure exactly what tomorrow's going to be like, but in my heart I feel a lot of um, anticipation. I think it's going to be a very special, a very special day. Because, you know, in our church we talk a lot about the ideal family. In fact, that's our teaching, that... God has been longing for a, a family where his love can dwell on the earth. And so we really believe that, you know, the world is, should be like a one world family of all races, of all people living together in love and harmony. But tomorrow I can really feel that now we're really starting to build an ideal family. You know, it's different than talking about it, but actually realizing you're getting married to someone and you're going to have children and, you know, you're really building it. It's, like a dream. Really, it's a dream. So it's, it's, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> You're happy. I really am. I'm very happy. So happy, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I feel kind of silly. <laughs> Wait for my mother to come. So I can show her my dress, and I'm sure she's going to cry a lot tomorrow. 
Reverend Moon talks about happiness for each person. You will be intoxicated in the love of God. Every cell in your body will explode with joy. Your eyes and ears, the tissues in your face, your arms and legs, everything will be in a rapture of joy. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You just had a focus there. Okay, I've done that. Button. Oh, the button. Ding dong. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sure. So you didn't see any demonstrators out there? No, it's all quiet, nice and beautiful, and the sun's <laughs> just coming up, and it's cool. Bye, Sue. Bye. See you, <laughs> see you there. Goodbye, Sue. Bye, Sue. Have fun. Yeah. Young people get married today. Not that living baloney, you know. That I don't like. This I like. Old fashioned. Good luck. C'est quelque chose d'extraordinaire, merveilleux, <laughs> merveilleux parce que c'est unique. <laughs> c'est vraiment le plus beau jour de la vie de nos enfants. <laughs> ah oui, c'est très émouvant. Oh. <laughs> Lovely people. I guess they're from all walks of life. The religious uh, pick up the bride and the groom. They're making the perfect match. No, oh, age, uh, age, uh, look, and everything looks close. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hello.
up very nice. I think it's fantastic. It's beautiful. One column and watch those ahead of you. Yeah. Welcome to this July 1st American ceremony of the international blessing of 10,000 couples in the Unification Church International. Through the teachings of our founder, the Reverend Sun Myung Moon, and under his guidance, membership in the Unification Church is most basically and essentially preparation for divine marriage. <laughs> are carried by grooms who are participating in today's ceremony, native citizens of the country whose flag they carry, over 54 countries in all. the rising sun what it hopes to see here on earth. It will reply that it wants to see a man and a woman who are absolutely perfected in love. And that's why it has been shining for thousands of years. If you have a way to ask the birds who are whistling in the morning, they will say they want to see the day when the kingship of God's love is established here on earth. At this time, Reverend and Mrs. Moon will enter to officiate at this holy wedding ceremony. They will be attended by four young children of the previously blessed families who will attend them with the bowls of holy water. Everybody had waited many years to come to that point. And there we were all together, you know, after so many years. <sighs> I think I'm going to cry. I guess it, being there was, you know, it was really the culmination of, you know, many, of many tears. Just as when you do something very difficult and you're somehow victorious, the people that you share that victory with have a very special bond. I feel how God must feel when he, when he looks at his children and he realizes how much they've gone through in order to create a peaceful world, a world of, of love and of harmony. 
Reverend Moon one time said to us, he said, I didn't come to the world to fight communism. I didn't come to the world to create a social revolution of any kind. He said, what I really came to do was to marry people and really make families. That's my role and the thing that to me is the closest to my heart. And so his feeling, I think, about the matching and the blessing is the deepest and most serious thing in his life. And also the point of greatest joy. You just feel the fullness of his heart as he goes through this process. It's not a routine thing for him. It is everything for him. He has real concern, almost part of him, maybe anxiety, whether we can really make it all the way rest of life and of course she wishes so and then I feel like that's the day he prays more deeply than any other day. He has all of the concern of a father. He really has that being. Every human being is a part of the universe, and if one part fails, the whole universe will ache over that failure. Do you pledge to observe heavenly law as an original man and woman, and should you fail, 
Would you pledge to take responsibility for that? Do you pledge to be the center of love before the society, nation, world, and universe based upon an ideal family? Reverend and Mrs. Moon will now invoke the marriage blessing upon the couples here assembled. Kalgan,しっかりね、当時ね、もうあなんさらんは、出国へ立ち足をつけた。世界は混乱の時でと、江戸で、天皇様の、と、家族、家族、民族、家族、家族、家族、家族、家族、家族、家族、家族、家族、
a moment of extraordinary and historical significance in the history of religion. This is such a moment. Let us be under no illusions about what we see and what we partake in today. You represent an incomparable spiritual force. I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, his blessing and grace be upon you all. Newlywed brothers and sisters, the Muslim world and you have many things in common. Your God and our God is one. We admire you and we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he be glorified, that he may bless you and that he may be your constant guide. May Allah be always with you. It is with a feeling of hope and joy that I convey my very best wishes and sincere blessings to these young people. May their children and grandchildren carry on the divine principles to the far corners of the earth as a message of peace and brotherhood for all mankind. Reverend Moon has said, we must all work for the ideal way of life. I exist for my family, my family exists for our society, my society exists for our nation, our nation exists for the world, the world exists for God, and God exists for you and me. In this great circle, all existence will fulfill its purpose of creation. There is abundant and profound joy. This is the kingdom of heaven. He believes this is to come from each individual. He has written, when you're eating a meal, feel that you are doing this for the entire four billion persons on earth, rather than just for yourself. You can be the central point of God's love emitting from you and the starting point of the purging of the world. The celebration does not end tonight. It's only the beginning.
blessings will go on. 